Hello, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. We are in the book of Psalms. There are 150 Psalms. They can be divided, and many do, in five groups, which will be corresponding to the first five books of the, or the scriptures, which will be Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. So if you count the Psalms being five books, not only just the book of Psalms, you would have 70 books in the King James Bible, not 66. So I really love those. <laughs> I, lo I love this 70, which is 10 times 7, more than 66. <laughs> anyway, the 150 Psalms are all prophetic. And they're part of the prophetic program because we should know by now, rightly divided in the world of truth, that there are two main divisions in the King James Bible. Not Old and New Testament, but uh, prophecy and mystery. So there is the prophetic program and there is the mystery program. The prophetic program has been revealed, <laughs> written down from the prophets from the beginning. The mystery was hid in God and has been revealed to the Apostle Paul. We, the body of Christ, are saved and sealed by grace through faith, thanks to the fact that Christ died for our sins, all of them, was buried and rose again third day to justify us. And once we believe and receive that gospel, we are saved, we are sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Praise God, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the first possession and to the praise of His glory. <laughs> anyway, Let's see, with the help of God, <clears throat> because without Him I can do nothing, if we can do this simple study of the Psalms, we we'll start with Psalm number one. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. This man goes through three phases, walks, stands, sits. The man who walks in the council of the ungodly eventually will stand in the way of sinners and eventually will sit in the seat of the scornful. But blessed is the man that walks not who will be this? A man of faith, a man who trusts and believes and confides in the Lord. They will be absolutely valid in the prophetic program as well in the mystery program. But the thing is that uh, here the man and the covenant with his works of righteousness according to the covenant proves that he believes. We the body of Christ, being saved and sealed by grace, we receive a position in Christ which is absolutely mind-blowing. We are accepted, blessed and complete. Accepted in the beloved, Ephesians 1.6. Blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, Ephesians 1.3. Complete in Christ, Colossians 2.10. Without us moving a finger, <laughs> without that, us doing any sort of work or works in which we try to prove to ourselves to the rest of the world but also to God that we are really people holy people well you can try, try, try and fail, fail, fail because the reality is all our sin comes short of the glory of God Romans 3, 23 be justified freely uh -huh. through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. But not freely because, you know, it's uh, <clears throat> cheap, you know. Oh, it's free. <clears throat> I don't know what's happening with me, sorry. I had some lemon and it's giving me problems. Sorry. <clears throat> That's it. I just put compose. 
All right. So, we receive the free gift of eternal life without doing any work whatsoever. I just go very quickly to Ephesians in chapter 2. And it says in verse 8 and 9. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is the gift of God. Not the faith, but the salvation. Not the works, lest any man should boast. Doesn't the Lord know, oh yes, he does, that our flesh would boast if we could do any sort of works they made us accept it with God, we'll say, oh, well, praise God. Yes, I was a sinner, but now I've changed it because I gave my life to Jesus. I made Jesus Lord of my life. You know, I repented and confessed my sins. I got baptized in water to follow Jesus in baptism. I go to church now. I pay tithes, offerings, and I'm gentle and kind. Blah, 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 blah. No, no. In your best day, the best of the best of the best <clears throat> of the days that you can imagine, if you are in Adam, if you haven't received the free gift of salvation, you're good for hell and the lake of fire. That's why, for by grace I say through faith, and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. What? The faith? No, the salvation. That's why it says, not the works. Your salvation is not the works, lest any man should boast. He introduces this concept even here. Even when we were dead in sins, you know what it means, dead, separated from God, in sins, in Adam. As quicken us together with Christ, and straight away the apostle of grace, our apostle Paul says, By grace ye are saved, and as raised up, up together, made us sit together in every presence in Christ Jesus. <laughs> okay, let's go back to Psalms. I'm too much in love with the, with the glorious, glorious, glorious gospel of grace. Anyway, blessed is the man that walks not. So this is walking, okay. In the counsel of the ungodly, no stands in the way of the sinners, no sits in the seat of the scornful. You walk in the counsel of the ungodly, you will stand in the way of the sinner, you're going to become sitting there in the seat of the scornful. <sighs> that's the flesh, man. You know, that's Adam. And guess what? You can't change Adam. But this is a man under grace. No, this is a man under covenant, which anyway, there is always the grace of God in operation because, yeah, God gives a covenant to Israel, old covenant, a new covenant, and it's because God is gracious. We don't deserve anything, and Israel doesn't deserve anything, and we, the body of Christ, in, you know, to a personal individual level we deserve nothing but hell and the lack of fire because hey jesus said it i didn't say the flesh profits nothing but thanks be to god for christ and the operation of god and the word of god so this man blesses say by his delight is in the law of the lord now praise god i love the law of the lord but i know i can't obey it I can't. I tried. No, once. It's a lifetime I tried and failed miserably every single time. Because I might do one good thing according to the law and fail in another. And if I break the law in one point, I'm guilty of breaking all the law. That's what James says. That's why, praise God, the gospel of the grace of God in Christ, the only Paul preaches, eh, is what really brings the salvation as a free gift <laughs> and that's why you can't boast in your flesh you can only boast in the lord which makes sense but this man 
He has the light and the law of the Lord, and he, in his law, in the law of the, uh, of the Lord, of course, does meditate day and night. Now, meditate is not like, you know, in the Eastern religion, you put your cross legs and your fingers your hand like this, and it's, oh, you know, the sacred chanting. You read it, you consider, and you uh, make every effort, in this case, to apply to your life, because you know that the law is holy and good and righteous, God gave the law. He's a righteous God. What do you think he would give? A bad law? Perfect. But there is a problem, Romans 8 explains, that the law was weak because of the flesh. Our flesh is the stumbling block. That's the thing that doesn't allow us to, to obey. We may agree 100%, oh yes, this is right, but still we come short. All the sin and can show to the glory of God. You can uh, change the word of God. If you try to change the word of God to suit your desires, you're going to be in trouble. That's what men do all the time. But, you know, that's what uh, mankind, well, that's the flesh does this. And he shall be this man like a tree planted by the rivers of water. So the analogy with the tree, because the tree has got roots, a trunk, branches, leaves, and eventually fruit. So the man that walks in the counsel of the Lord and knowing the counsel of the sinners and meditating his law day and night here on the covenant, that's a man of Israel. But I think this is actually, once again, a figure of Christ shall be like a tree planted planted by the rivers of water the, the water here represents the spirit of god the flow of life that brings forth fruit its fruit in its season you see the order god is not the other confusion there are seasons and there is a season to a season sorry to sow the seed and take care of the plant and then the season of harvest there is a a clock god established this in the book of genesis when he created the, the, the sun and the moon and the stars that's a calendar and that by commandment of god this calendar goes on constantly, constantly, day in and day out. His faithfulness never fails, you know. So this man shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. It's important because a good tree planted by the rivers of water is going to have a, also a good leaf. That you look at the leaf, they're healthy, no wither, and you know that then the, the seed will come, the the fruit will come. Then comes the flower, and then the fruit. Whatsoever he does shall prosper. Well, yeah, <laughs> if you will be able, if you will be able to obey the law of God perfectly inside out because they're always spiritual but we are carnal sold under sin mm, that's what paul explains in romans 7 we're in adam the transgressor adam the disobedient when the gospel finds us he finds us well the gospel finds us as children of wrath and disobedience death in trespasses and sins he finds us enemies of god ungodly enemies of god that situation is really drastic dire straits there is no way out you can't change adam you can't get yourself out of adam you try to reform in italy when i was born there is a proverb that says you wash a dog you clean him you dress him it's still a dog also a pig 
You can take a pig which normally is in the mire, all dirty and smelly. You wash it really good. You clean him. You dress him. You put a, a tuxedo. <laughs> it looks fantastic to look at. And then five minutes later, you find that it's already rolling in the mire because that's the nature of the pig, the nature of the dog, and clean. And the nature of Adam is that. Don't live in the illusion that you can reform yourself. You can't get out of Adam. You are in a prison. And that's the flesh. Not the body as such. You know, the body is good. God gave us the body. Without the body, we, we can't even express ourselves. You know, we have five senses to communicate with the, the external world. We see, we hear, we smell, we taste, we touch. Those are the five senses, the five windows to communicate with the external reality. But there is an internal reality, is the spirit of man. And that man has got a mind, and that mind needs the spirit of, of your mind to be renewed by the word of God. Don't leave the illusion that you can change this you know, reality that you are in Adam by religion. Because that's religion, that's what it does. It gives you the illusion that, you, oh, now I reform myself, now I don't do this anymore. In reality, let's say that you manage to clean yourself good, you still have a problem. You are in Adam. And there is a mountain never ending of sins that you have committed in the course of your life, which is. Uh, which is a real problem because one, one sin will send you to hell in the lake of fire, imagine. That's why you need the atonement that you can't produce it with prayer, confession of sins, fasting, going to church, not do this or do that, you know. You need the blood of Christ applied. And that's what happens. In Romans 5.11, it says, we, by, now, by, by whom, that's Christ, we now receive the atonement. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 5, 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoicing over the glory of God. And it says in verse 11, And only so, but we also join God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we now receive the autonomy when it says, For if, if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And then you go here, much more being now justified by his blood. You see what happens. We shall be saved from blood through him. I'm going backwards. <laughs> But God commands his law towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. This is the point. You need this and it happened, praise God. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. You know, need to understand this. The body of Christ is not appointed to wrath. Praise God, you know. Let's go back to Psalm 1, 1. <laughs> if I can. Oh, man. Now, you know, yeah, the Israel program, this prosperity on earth was very important, was part and parcel of the blessings. You go in Deuteronomy 28, you read the blessings and the curses. If Israel would obey, uh, you know, observe all the commandments of the Lord, you know, with all their heart and do it, they would be blessed. But if they didn't, they would be cursed. And there, there are 14 verses concerning the blessings. And the, I'm going to look now. I'm going to look now. Deuteronomy 28, verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if... Don't forget this if. <laughs> Thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do... To observe, you observe the commandment 
but also not only you see, you read it, you observe, you, you obey it. And to do, this is a works, man. All his commandments. How many? All his commandments. Is that a man can do this? Not to my knowledge, except Christ, who did it. He fulfilled the law. He said, I didn't come to abolish it, but to fulfill it. You look at the life of Christ. <laughs> Nobody could convince him of sin because he was not a sinner. He never sinned. He never sinned, you understand? He knew no sin. For he, God, made him who knew no sin to be sin for us. That we, the sinners, the ungodly sinners, the animals of God, might be made the righteousness of God in him. You know? But here, which I commanded is that, that the Lord thy God would set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. And then you go to verse, until verse 14. And thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I commanded this day to the right hand or to the left to go after the gods to save them. But then curses, but it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Cursed, and goes on and on and on. You can see how many curses. Then verse 43, 51, 53, 54, 58. Oh man, 61, going on and on, you know. Curses. Some people, some people <laughs> think they can obey the law. Oh man, you know. I understand. Ignorance is a, is a real problem. There are two great problems, ignorance and unbelief. Paul said he did what he did when he was persecuted in the little flock. He did it ignorantly, in unbelief. But he received mercy that in him first, first in the path, that God, Jesus would show, God would show his uh, great mercy, long suffering, as a pattern to them that would believe on him for life everlasting. So yeah, the contrast is, the ungodly are not so, because this is the, the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, no stands in the way of sin, and no sits in the seat of, of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he does the meditate day and night, and all the blessing. But then it says in verse 4, the ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. <laughs> oh, praise you, Jesus. No sin is in the congregations, in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly, ungodly shall perish. By contrast, go to the gospel of grace, the gospel of the cross, the poor preachers. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, wherein you stand. The ungodly shall not stand in the congregation of the righteous. But the godly, yes. Why? Because we are so godly, aren't we? No, because of Christ and this glorious gospel <laughs> by which also ye are saved. No, you have been saved. You know, why I use the King James Bible? Because I'm a maniac, I know. No, because I know what the other Bibles do. Eh? You want to believe me? No, you don't. Okay. Okay, look, the net. The New English Translation. Now I want to make clear for you, brothers and sisters, the gospel that I preached to you, that you receive them on which you stand, and by which you are being saved. So when I, when it's finished, when I when am I gonna be sure that I'm really saved with this? Impossible. What about the remedy Bible? The remedy New Testament.
It is by the remedy procure, procured by Jesus that you've been healed. So long as you remain connected to Christ, holding firmly to the truth about God that I preach to you, for if you let go of this truth, you will relapse into self finishes fear. I mean, you know, what the New English? The New English translation, and by which you have been saved. Oh, unbelievable. I mean, unbelievable. Let's see the Berean. I don't know. But this gospel you're saved. Okay, this one keeps... What about the Good News Bible? That is the gospel, the message I preach to you. You are saved by the gospel if you all firmly with it. Unless... It doesn't say all been. What's this? God's Word. If you hold on the web, what's this? Well, some do, some don't. But well, well, you know, look here. By which you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. What does it mean? Keeping in memory what I preached unto you. He preached this, the death, by resurrection. Nothing else. Nothing to add, nothing, nothing to subtract or diminish. For I deliver unto you, first of all, that which I also received. How the Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and he was buried and rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. People say, according to the Scriptures, this is not a mystery. Hey, the letters of all Scriptures, this is Scriptures. Holy Scripture, just like a Deuteronomy that we read, or Psalms that we're reading. So, we need to understand, these are the pure words of God. Praise God, therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, which judgment? At the judgment seat of Christ, no, at the great white throne judgment. The ungodly go not to the judgment seat of Christ because they don't belong to Christ. The body of Christ and every member of the body will go to the judgment seat of Christ, which is not for sin. Because if it's for sin or sins, why did he die on that cross? Why does he say we're saved? Because he, he took our sins away, you know. He paid the price, the autonomy. What is it? The autonomy. Ah. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. No sinners in the congregation of the righteous. The verb was stand, by which you stand, we stand. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous. He does. The Lord knows those who are His. Second Timothy 2.19 Nevertheless, the foundation of God stands sure, having this seal. The Lord knows them that are His. Let everyone the names or name the name of Christ depart from iniquity. You know, I know I'm 75. In total sincerity, honestly talking, friend to friend, brother to brother. If I examine my life on this earth from the day I remember, you know, I, I have memories very, very you know, blurred, even of the age of two, three, three years old. But anyway, then I start remember b better from the age of five, six, and seven, and so forth. For what I remember, there's not been one day or night in my life that I didn't come short of the glory of God, that I didn't see. Impossible. Maybe with thoughts, words, or deeds. Even as being saved and sealed by grace, even knowing the scriptures, because the glory is that God takes you out of Adam and puts you into Christ, and there God sees you in Christ, because we are dead with Christ, buried with Christ, risen with Christ, ascended with Christ, seated with Christ in heavenly places. But we still have these members here that are on the earth that we need to mortify, put to death. As an act of faith, because we don't kill ourselves physically. And still, one way or another, you will trip, you will fall, you will sin. 
if you will be able to stop sinning altogether, you must be in heaven to do that. When we leave this body in the grave, or oh, yeah, cremated, doesn't really matter. When we, when our spirit comes up, straight away it goes to the Lord if we're saved, and our body stays there, sleeps in the earth, or oh, cremated, doesn't matter, because then it's going to be the day the catching up of the body of Christ. The Lord is going to raise us, give a new glorified body. But we're present with the Lord, absent from the body, present with the Lord. The foundation of God stands sure, having this seal. The Lord knows them that are His. I don't know if you belong to the Lord. You don't know if I do. I tell you one thing. I know I'm saved and sealed by grace, not because of anything I've done, said, uh, performed, but because Christ died for my sins. Christ was buried. Christ rose again. And Paul says he was delivered, Romans 4, 25, he was delivered for our offenses, was risen again for our justification. I heard the truth, the word of truth, the gospel of my salvation. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4. Uh, Romans 1, 16. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God. And to salvation for everyone who believes, the Jew first and also the Greek. By grace, through faith, no works, Ephesians 9. All I, all I said in my heart, I believe, that's it. I receive, I accept the gospel of Christ, no Christ. You can't accept Christ into your heart, that's ridiculous. That's an invention. Yet God accepts you in Christ when you believe what Christ has accomplished. That's why all religion... And religiosity is absolutely total vanity. Vanity of, I mean, to the maximum exponential power that you can think of. Because it's an illusion. Or oh, today I didn't do this, I didn't do that. I feel good, you know. You see? I'm sure that God is happy with me. No, never. But God is pleased with Christ. And so he puts you in Christ because what Christ has done is perfect. Christ is righteous inside out. The Lord Jesus Christ. You don't make him Lord. He's already Lord. <laughs> and now in the world you're going to put yourself in Christ. You can't. You can try, try, try and fail, fail, fail. God, the Holy Ghost, puts you in Christ. Ephesians 1. If it's not like that, nobody say. Praise God. Oh, praise God. What do we have? In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. He hasn't solved the problem of sin. We still sin. Because we're still in the flesh. But we receive the forgiveness of sins according to the issues of his grace. And then he says here, yeah, in verse 12, that we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ, in whom you also trusted. Who? Ye. The body of Christ in Ephesus, the Ephesians, those who have believed, who have trusted, in whom you also trusted, after you heard the word of the truth, which is that very resurrection, Christ died for your sins, man, he was buried, he rose again to justify you, the gospel of your salvation, not the gospel of Christ, uh, not the gospel of the kingdom. Sorry, it's the gospel of the grace of God. Acts twenty twenty four. Uh, it's the gospel of Christ. Uh, you know Romans one sixteen. It's the gospel. Of, you know by grace through faith, no works. Ephesians two nine. Go to Galatians one four. Christ gave Himself for us sins, so they might deliver us from this present evil world, the death according to the will of God and our Father. In whom you also trusted, that after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. That's what God does. That's the wisdom of God and the power of God. Hear this ungodly sin, the enemy of God, dead in trespasses and sins. 
a child of rats and obedience, like me, okay? And I'm talking about you. I try desperately to obey God. I try not to sin. I try to do the right thing, and I fail miserably. Sometimes I did the right thing, but apparently. <laughs> but most of the time, 99.99, yeah, I will say 100%, because even when I did the right thing, I did the right thing according to my fleshly wisdom. God is not interested in the flesh. That's why he crucified it with Christ. So God says, okay, this guy, I'm going to save him because Christ did pay the, for the atonement, you know, shed his blood. And now I'm going to seal him. I'm going to uh, lock him. I lock him in Christ. I put him in Christ. In the same book of Ephesians, in chapter 4, it says also on verse 30, go very quickly there, very quickly, I try, you see. <laughs> oh, praise God. This is a great truth, brothers and sisters. Oh. Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed, ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. I remember the first year that I start to understand a little bit of the gospel of grace, the revelation of the mystery, that somebody online said to me, yeah, but you can break the seal. Yeah, I can break the seal of the tomato bottle. The, you know, the tomato sauce bottle has got a seal, sealed for safety. I can break that easily. <laughs> me? Breaking the seal of the Holy Ghost? So I can come out. Oh man, that's ridiculous. Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you're sealed unto the day of redemption. God is absolutely marvelous. Our salvation is done deal. To him that works not, but believes on him that justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. But for us also to whom we shall be imputed righteousness. If we believe on him, that raise up Jesus our Lord from the dead. Jesus our Lord raise up from the dead. Jesus our Lord who was delivered for our offenses. And was again raised again for our justification. I just realized... For scarcely for righteous men will one die. Yet per adventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commends his love towards us. In that why we were yet sinners Christ died for us. Much more than be now, be now, please now, 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 now. Justified by his blood, we shall be saved from that through him. The body of Christ is not going to meet God in wrath. This is going to displease all these prophecy teachers that say, oh, the wrath of God is going to come on you, you know, you sinner. Get what? Get this. If you are in Christ, because you have believed and received the gospel of Christ, the gospel of the grace of God, you're not going to go, you're not going to go and meet God in wrath. Sorry, mate, whoever you are, you enjoy so much that. The church doesn't need to be purified by the fires of the great tribulation. The church, which is his body, the body of Christ, not the denomination. The body of Christ is already complete in Christ. Accept, bless, complete. Circumcised with the circumcision of Christ. Delivered from this present evil world. And we receive the atonement. We accept it in Christ, Ephesians 1.6. We are blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. In Christ. Ephesians 1 3. We are complete in Christ. Colossians 2 10. We are delivered from this present evil world. We have the circumcision of Christ, which is the cutting off the body of sins of the flesh. So the sins of the flesh don't intact, don't touch your spirit. You are saved, you are sealed in Christ. The Holy Ghost has put you in Christ. You have the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, 100 percent for you, 
from the moment you accept for eternity praise be to God you are now a child of God in Christ a child of light you have you are an ambassador for Christ you are a minister of reconciliation with the word of reconciliation you can tell the lost out there that Christ wants to save them that God wants to save them that's the will of God in this the dispensation the grace of God he will have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth that's why Christ came in this world to save sinners not to create this bylam this confusion of religion and religiosity and denomination where everybody's playing the trump they say come with us we got the we are no don't come with me no 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 don't come with me believe this gospel receive this gospel of grace how the Christ died for your sins he was buried rose again third day to justify you according to the scripture believe it God saves you he seals you and then you study this word don't come to me I don't belong to any denomination and okay even though I mean you know I would say I radically divide the word of God as I believe the body of Christ begins in Acts 9 you so I could say I'm a mid Acts right the value yeah okay but even even that I don't care I'm saved and sealed by grace man I'm done anything good that God would look at me and say oh what a wonderful wonderful man no way but when he sees me in Christ he sees you in Christ that's why the body of Christ is made up of members in particular and we're all the same man there is no I am your pastor what what to do what to check me to control me and eh, to put me under your dominant uh, fist I belong to the body of Christ and I hope you do too Christ is the head of the body you know he's got the preeminence He's above a principality, dominions and thrones. He's above, above, above. He's uh, sitting at the right hand of the Father, praise God. He's alive. And he's the intercessor that we have in heaven, praise God. And we are on earth while we travel this earthly life with all the ups and downs, the valleys and the peaks of the mountains, whatever it is. The Holy Ghost is the intercessor here on earth because we don't know to pray as we ought. And the Holy Ghost intercedes for us, for the saints, according to the will of God, with groanings which cannot be uttered. And the, and the one who reads, he knows the mind of the Spirit, that's God. Because the Spirit intercedes for the saints, according to the will of God. That's why it says here, you know, in Philippians, come on now, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go there. Be careful for nothing. <laughs> Praise God. Be careful for nothing. By everything, by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests, plural, be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. In this very moment, I can pray for all the people I love very much. And they, have, they don't want to get this simple gospel. They want to be holding to some kind of denomination of belief mighty god you know everything so instead of being made careful and, and pulling my hair oh lord what's gonna happen to my this and that hey lord here they are i present them to you i pray that the spirit of grace the spirit of love the spirit of the truth and the word of truth will work the will of god in their lives they're gonna be saved and sealed they were gonna come to believe in due time, Lord, you know better, you know better, you know better. God knows better everything. Why we don't know how to pray? Now, I pray like this. Eh? Maybe my prayer is so wrong. But the Holy Ghost knows I'm praying. The, the Holy Ghost intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. You Are you telling you, are you telling us that you're a saint? Yes, I am. You see the light on my head? <laughs> Saint means set apart. Praise be to God. The moment I believe they receive this gospel, set apart. You belong to the Lord. He is for us what? His righteousness, redemption, sanctification, and wisdom. He has been made to us these four things, like the four points of the cross. Christ, 
the wisdom of God, the power of God, the gospel of Christ, the gospel of the cross. I want to encourage you. You may think, ah, no, it's not working. It's not going to work with me. I'm too much of a sinner. Jesus Christ came in this world to save sinners. It doesn't specify, you know. Say, so, but you don't know me. I don't want to know. Why should I even know your sins? So I can point my finger. No, 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 no. It's between you and God. That's why you got only one mediator between man and God. That man, Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus, the man. As a man. But he's God. God and man. It's the perfect answer of God to the otherwise impossible mission to be saved. Believe, receive, and give glory to God. You're not going to be in someone, the ungodly, you know. You're going to be godly because he makes you godly. More godly than Christ. He puts you in Christ. Father, we thank you. We give you glory. Sorry, my friends, if I got carried away. But uh, I know today, I, I, I believe this gospel 12 years ago. Before I believed in, in 1972. But my, it was a mixed gospel, you know. So I didn't know the Bible at all, you know. I'm not saying I know now, I'm studying, I'm learning. So sometimes I mean, my way of doing is not orthodox, like, you know. Some people are very calm. Some people scream all the time. I can be calm and screaming. <laughs> the point is, God knows what I desire. I desire what God desires because he will have all men to be saved and come to knowledge of truth. I join the will of God because I'm an ambassador for Christ. Now, what do you mean? Did, did he say to you, you're an ambassador? No, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, 21. It tells you every member of the body of Christ is an ambassador for Christ. So we have an ambassadorship from the third heaven. The will of God. He wants to save and seal. So you say this all the time. He wants to save and seal. What is written? Okay. Paul is exhorting Timothy. Therefore the festival of application, prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men. For kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Wherefore, I'm more than a preacher and apostle, I speak the truth in Christ, and I not a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. Please believe the death by resurrection of Christ. Put all your trust in that. Don't give me prayers. Don't say, Lord, I'm a sinner. Please forgive me. He knows already. It's not necessary. That's why he died. He was buried. He rose again. You believe this, he saves you and seals you with your spirit of promise. Grace and peace, Lord. Thank you, Father. We give you glory, all the glory to God. Amen. Amen.